presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Andy in Boulder, Colorado. Hey, Andy, what's going on, brother? How much, Tom? How you doing? I'm great, man. Yourself? Pretty good. Hey, congratulations on a grandbaby. Yes, thank you. I know. <laughs> you just said, Tommy just sent me a picture. I mean, it's gorgeous out right now. He just was taking him out for his first walk this morning. All right. He's growling and prowling already. Yeah, I bet. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> What's going on, Tigers? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com, or you can reach me in the Tigers Den on Discord. If you don't have that, I really recommend you get it. All right, so before we got off the news there, we were talking a little bit about Virgin Orbit and how that, quite like its rocket, has completely cratered, has completely crashed. Um, it has gone down 41% pre-market today. Um, they're going to halt operations. They're laying off like 90% of uh, their, their workforce. Um, this was such a weird stock to me because it's, it's kind of like, maybe it's ahead of its time in a way, but the, these satellite stocks themselves, you know, I, I think of like GSAT and everything, don't really get a lot of like trading volume whatsoever, even on big news about uh, investments um, or, or funding. Um, and this just seemed kind of like, to, to me at least, and I you know, of course could be wrong, but it just seemed superfluous to the market. And uh, when you get kind of like economic tightening, like we're getting, you know, that kind of fat gets peeled off pretty quickly. Um, so, you know, I don't know anyone except people online who have been in virgin orbit, but that is, is out of it. Uh, Dan Hart uh, said, of, this is a quote from him. He said, unfortunately, we've not been able to secure the funding to provide a clear path for this company. We have no choice but to implement immediate, dramatic, and extremely painful changes. Um, they had six rocket launches. I think four of them were successful. And most recently, they had one that failed. Um, and it was something simple like the, like the fuel filter fell in and, and caused the explosion. But, but that destroyed not only the, the rocket carrying it, um, which didn't even make it into orbit, uh, but, but destroyed nine satellites as well. And this is like, when you have such high expense for kind of operations, like shooting something into orbit, you really can't afford uh, something like that. So Virgin, Virgin Orbit is completely off the table now. Uh, let's take a look. Um, this is an interesting, I know we were talking about um, commercial REITs and how those are just done with, um, but this company Prologus, they do logistics REITs. Um, they have a real estate with 196 billion in assets under management, um, international company, but they service people like Amazon, FedEx, uh, UPS, et cetera. Um, and they had a little price correction uh, earlier this month, um, but they've gone up, you know, they've, they've recovered a little bit from it, um, not on immense volume or anything like that. But uh, it certainly, since the beginning of this year, has seen some pretty nice, some pretty nice gain um, and stability, um, save recent times for it. Um, I, I do think that, like, you know, any kind of REIT, I suppose, is a little suspect now, but um, with your, like, single families and, and logistics like this, um, it might be worth a look into, at least regarding uh, value investing. Um, Old Dominion's doing all right, too, regarding this kind of string. Um, I don't even know what we have here. But uh, let's see, we can come back to that one. The one I really wanted to focus on today um, was Tesla and kind of the EV market itself. So obviously, Tesla is, is bumped up immensely. Um, everything else is, is down. Let's like run through this quickly. You know, Lucid um, has basically been a 7% loss. Nikola, which we'll get to later, is... Uh, Dollar fifty trading now. Neo's down eighty percent from the peak. Rivian's at thirteen bucks. Molin is at ten cents. I mean, what else? Lordston is at sixty cents. These are all total losses. Um, obviously, we were speaking about how Ford 
is having issue, major issues with theirs as well. Um, Tesla still has that, that name power, but the, I think there's going to be some serious problems you know, with, with Elon Musk's endeavors going forward. He is so stretched in so many ways, and he has his hand in so many pots. Um, and I don't think that the kind of tightening that we're going to see in maybe the next year is going to be conducive for that. Um, I remember one of the big blowups uh, regarding Tesla uh, was going to be their deployment of, of solar panels. Um, but so far, they've only installed 3,000, which is way off estimates of what they were saying. And it just seems like, the, I, I don't know if people just forget about this kind of stuff. I, I mean, I, I see just most of this being hype investing. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I, maybe at like 100, Tesla was a really cool buy right now, but something like this, I don't know. I want to stay away from it. But I said that last time and the thing shot up and uh, one of my buddies asked me what I thought and I was like, no, nah, that's, would not buy calls or not, <laughs> not buy at equity. And then like, I don't know, two days later, great earnings and then it just shot up. Um, let's see. Another stock that's doing quite well is going to be CalMain. So what is CalMain? They're the food product guys, but their big interesting thing that's occurred, and this has to do with inflation, has to do um, with their eggs. They're massive. They're like the largest producer of eggs uh, in the U.S. And they have seen profits surge 718% amid the U.S. food shortage, which is absolutely nuts. I see more people nowadays actually going, in, especially in St. Pete, um, adding chickens. Uh, they buy chickens, build a coop. My family members have them. Uh, I know a ton of friends, and uh, they, <laughs> they'll actually sell the eggs, too, on the side to make a little bit, obviously under market price for them or whatever the you know, supermarkets are selling them for. But it's nuts. I mean, this, this gain of 718%, I think can help us better kind of grasp how insane this inflation has been for foodstuffs. Now, of course, uh, in recent times, I, I think the president came out and said um, that uh, food prices are not rising as rapidly as they have been. But I mean, it's, it's insane to kind of see this and something like a 700% soar in profits is uh, it's totally insane. See what else we got for the shorter news. We'll get to this a little bit after the break. Um, the FDIC is going to exercise their rights for first citizens um, regarding the SVB buy. Um, first citizens didn't pay out right. Um, what they did is essentially put up some equity for it. And the stock obviously surged heavily with this. And uh, the FDIC is going to exercise those rights. And that's going to be about $500 million. And uh, we'll get back to that um, when we return. Um, also, we'll go through the tech leads, um, U.S. layoffs. Um, tech is, is really losing a lot of their employees. And again, this is part of this kind of trimming. Uh, so stay tuned, guys. We'll be back and we'll go through all of that and some more interesting things. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, so I was talking a little bit about Nikola um, and just the market in general. Um, trading so low. Th these guys were at the heart of like a pretty big, uh, you know, a little scandal, I suppose. But Nikola shares sink after its $100 million stock offering, priced at 20% below market. Uh, on Thursday, they announced plans for a $100 million um, secondary stock offering, but nobody cared, it seemed like. Um, the electric heavy truck maker Nikola said that it planned a $100 million secondary stock offering announced on Thursday after the U.S. markets closed. Um, shares fell more than 15% on Friday morning, hitting a new 52-week low. Um, even with the discount, there appears to have been very limited interest in the shares on Wall Street. Uh, Citigroup, their underwriter, was only able to place about a third of the shares with its clients. This is insane. Uh, an unnamed private investor has agreed to buy the remainder directly from Nikola. That's such a big gamble on them. Um, I think we're going to see some basically slowing of this, which is, I, you know, you have city, uh, excuse me, you have, you have states like California who have just passed now, I think every truck on the road, half of them, excuse me, uh, have to be electric by 2035. Um, so you, you get some of this weird, you get this government support for it, but it just is, it's slow moving right now. Um, I think it just requires so much research and development, so much kind of money in there in order to make it, and you're not gonna see like the gains. Um, the automakers won't see the gains. Um, for a while with this kind of stuff. And again, like what is different with Nikola than any other kind of tech company? Uh, I mean, you're, you're just betting, you're, you're just betting on them making some good money in the future. It's all DCF and when you have high rates, DCF looks pretty uh, unattractive. Um, a little bit of interesting stuff regarding like the lithium ions is, uh, let's, let's move this out here. I posted this in the den a little while ago but this is pretty neat regarding like just some technological advancements. Uh, the way that lithium ion batteries work is you have, you know, your, you have like your two nodes, right? You're sending energy through, but there's a medium, okay? That the electrons kind of exist in and that creates its field. Um, and uh, there's always been a big talk about, you know, are these batteries even sustainable for the environment? Um, what happens when they're old and, and wasted? So these scientists have figured out a way uh, to actually use um, chitin, which is what makes up, uh, you know, like crustacean shells and bug shells. Um, and they use that as the, the medium, uh, which powers batteries, essentially, um, or at least allows the batteries to, to conduct a current. 
Um, pretty neat. I mean, that's completely biodegradable. Um, and the idea is that, you know, this would be pretty widely adopted. Once that degrades on the inside, um, you can just recycle everything else. Uh, it's pretty neat. Um, so I'm, I don't think that, uh, at least the study doesn't say anything about them being more efficient than they are currently, um, but it certainly is like a major point of sale, right? If they can make this commercial. Uh, Jambalaya in the den, let's see what he asked. He said, can you discuss whether the market gliding up like a Frisbee? Is that it's discounting any more rate hikes um, or my own perception on it? Um, I think there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I definitely think that the market is warming up to the idea that there aren't gonna be any more rate hikes. Um, and certainly you have like pretty prominent figures like Michael Burry um, saying, you know, that he was wrong about his sell order um, and that if, you know, you just bought, you did really well, kind of suggesting that we were bottoming out. Um, I mean, obviously we're, we're, we might break 4,100 in the SP, uh, SP 500 today. Um, you know, that's some pretty good upward momentum and stuff like that. Um, I still think, and I've, I've said this, I think in the uh, last time, it's, I don't think we're out of the neck, we're not, uh, we're still in the, in the woods. And what I mean by that is that uh, there's not gonna be quantitative easing in the way that I think people think there will be. Even though the feds don't raise rates again, so much has to do with, um, with, with, with banks and, and the credit lines. And what's happening is that the margin between the federal fund rate and what the banks are lending out is so tight that we might for a while see um, uh, not illiquidity, but just not new loans being put out. It'll, it'll be a while before highly capitalized banks um, start sending out new loans. Um, so I, I think this market has experienced kind of ruthless optimism for quite a while, especially since 2020. Um, I mean, we saw like insane scores. Um, who doesn't want that back? And then also, you know, imagine buying in at some of these big tech companies or companies in general when they were trading at their, I mean, all time highs of hundreds of percent higher than what they'd ever trade at, right? Traded at. If, you're, if your price point is something like that, I mean, you're going to want it. You're going to want it to be higher. And nobody wants to be a bear either, right? Even though a lot of times that's the conservative kind of uh, position to take. So, you know, I, I, I don't think we're out of the woods yet on it whatsoever, uh, Jambalaya, if that, if that answers your question um, at all. Let's see here. Let's move a little bit back into what I was saying regarding the FDIC. So they're exercising the rights in first citizens. Um, regulator, the FDIC, exercises equity rights in first citizens, bank shares incorporated um, as part of the deals to rescue the failed lenders, uh, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Uh, the equity right to produce five, excuse me, to purchase 500 million in first citizens was exercised uh, March 28th. Um, and uh, First Citizens is gonna is gonna send this over. Um, this is so. This number is still so nuts to me, uh, triggering an estimated 20 billion hit to the government-run insurance fund. I mean, like, just one bank <laughs> did this. First Citizens obviously did not pay cash up front for the Silicon Valley Bank deal. Instead, it granted the equity appreciation rights. And since it all shot up, they're like, hey, why not? Let's exercise that. And it kind of pads them too for any weird stuff going on. Um, again, I don't think, there's been so much capital flight out of the banks in general. Uh, the, the number came out with Bank of America, I think it's something like 580 million. What's interesting about that too is it's not just into, into um, money, money markets, but which it is, it's, it's, it's a lot of it's going into money markets, but we're also seeing that uptick in crypto, uh, which we can get to, but there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on with that. Um, the FDIC head was when he was in Congress, or excuse me, in Senate, uh, he was saying that these crypto friendly banks were mismanaging, uh, risks, like just really traditional risks. Um, and then Gensler of the SEC wants 2.5 billion in funding to chase down crypto misconduct. And we'll get into those a little bit. Um, I think personally, just to like put it in like th this thought out there, um, that this runoff, at least in Bitcoin, uh, is is going to be short lived, and this is going to be this is where the whales are going to take a lot of of profits. The, the best place to be, at least right now, 
from the rest of the market is going to be these these money funds. And if you think about it, um, if you're sitting there, you're a whale in Bitcoin. Let's say you your native currency is USD. It or let's say you even are from a country whose currency is it, or economy is doing even worse. Of course, you're going to want to trade out of Bitcoin and get that dollar. Um, so we'll get a little bit into that. Uh, we'll get into some like liquidity issues that just exist in general with it. And then really the star of the crypto world, in my opinion, which is Ethereum, they're shifting over to new proof of concept. Um, and I think that has a lot of risk for illiquidity as well. So folks, stay tuned and we'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, so you get the capital flights out of banks right now, obviously going into the money funds, uh, the money markets, but uh, look at this here. This is, this is something I think even the first time I like filled in for Tom, one of the things I spoke about was was crypto and like the theory behind it, right? And there's always like this could be essentially um, a hedge against inflation. And I just didn't I just didn't buy it. Um, and what I, I didn't buy it into that concept at all. We we might see a little bit um, of this in there. At least it's a hedge against banks doing crazy things. Uh, but even then, it's sometimes not the bank is is mismanaging it. So investors pour money into crypto investments for the fourth straight month. Assets under management for digital assets. Products climbed uh, to $13.4 billion in March, up 60% from their 2022 low in November. Um, the amount invested in digital asset products climbed for a fourth straight month in March as cryptocurrency prices continue to soar, according to the data from Crypto Compare. Uh, and this just essentially reiterates that. Um, like, it is, it is interesting. I, I think, like, there is that 
party that exists, like the the ideologues regarding crypto. And I can respect like the diversity of thought for sure, and trying to come up with novel I not novel ways to um, kind of either improve or at least change um, the way economics kind of occurs, or at least you know money theory. Um, but at the end of the day, what what crypto is really being used for, and it, it, it's just being gambled on, right? They're holding it as like a highly appreciating asset. People are starting to buy crypto from centralized um, exchanges in, in the case of um, what Sam Bankman Fried was doing. Um, and that's, you know, antithetical to what the idea of, of crypto was, right? It was a total decentralized concept. Um, the way that Bitcoin did, it was a proof of work. And basically you'd have, this is why GPUs skyrocketed, is there were, people were using them in order to solve uh, hashes, and hashes are essentially just kind of, you know, in, encrypted lines, encrypted puzzles, and they would uh, basically use all that power in order to crack it, and that would create a new blockchain. Ethereum has just uh, introduced something called proof of stake, and the way that they do it instead is, you know, you have, let's say, 100 Ethereum, and, um, you tie up 32% of that, right? And the more and more that occurs, uh, the more that feeds into the algorithm itself. And then uh, they don't get a share of the block, but what they do is they get fees essentially um, from other people. And that um, is kind of how new blocks and new Ethereum is created. This, in, in some ways, I feel like can cause liquidity issues. And that was always the problem, I think, with, with Bitcoin specifically. It was never really treated um, as an actual currency. Um, digital asset is, you know, a way better way, I think, to explain it since it's a little bit broader. Um, but it, it turns out, too, now, even at this level, at 28,000, 29,000 Bitcoin breached, um, you have something like 80% of them all being illiquid. Um, this isn't... I, I do think that, like, being a little guy and trying to move into crypto right now, Bitcoin is a way to kind of, like, hedge against anything that's going on in the traditional market uh, might be a, a bad move because I do think there's going to be some like massive reaping of profits from people uh, who bought a lot of Bitcoin um, at, at lower levels. And we've seen money put into there just evaporated in the same way multiple times. Um, so we can see here that the FDIC is now really cracking down on it. Uh, Crypto-friendly banks mismanaged traditional risks. FDIC head tells the Senate hearing. Um, the United States Senate Banking Committee held a hearing. Um, the FDIC said this was no good, uh, at least regarding how uh, some banks were handling uh, risk. Um, FDIC Chair Martin Groenberg spoke about the causes of the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, including the role of digital assets and the agency's responses to the crisis. High levels of uninsured deposits and rapid growth were common factors in the bank collapses in March. Um, his narrative began with the closing of the digital asset-focused Silvergate Bank. Um, and that story began with FTX, uh, which has been a uh, story in and of itself recently regarding um, kind of new uh, <laughs> items coming to light with Sam Bankman Freed bribing Chinese officials. Um, FTX represented less than 10% of Silvergate Bank's total deposits, but the bank lost 68% of its deposits in the aftermath. Um, and this is what happens. You just get these massive chain events when one of these um, developers, essentially, of, of digital assets just completely closes. Um, Signature Bank was more diversified than Silvergate uh, Bank. Um, excuse me, sig yeah. Silvergate Bank or SVB. Uh, and that was probably because the bank's decision to reduce its exposure to digital assets uh, which is just, you know, that's a lot of risk management for what just occurred. Um, after the FTX bankruptcy, immediate scrutiny of the bank's ties to the crypto exchange. The bank received more negative attention related to FTX. It was sued for allegedly facilitating uh, the commingling of accounts. Deposit outflows from Signature Bank began March 9th and became acute the following day, Friday, uh, with about 20% of deposits being withdrawn in hours. Management was unable to provide accurate financial data, and the situation deteriorated. Uh, resolution, this is a quote now, resolution of the negative balance required a prolonged joint effort among Signature Bank regulators and the Federal Home Loan Bank of New York to pledge collateral and obtain the necessary funding from the Federal Reserve's discount window. And, and if anyone's listening out there who is, you know, really uh, 
you know, you know like an ape in crypto. Um, again, like the guys who are holding this stuff and pumping it and, and facilitating the transactions of stuff don't believe in the, in my opinion, obviously, in the, in the broader theory of, of what crypto was supposed to do. They really are treating it just as like hyper appreciating assets and kind of like a hot potato type deal and kind of riding the hype train. I think that's important to look into if you, you know, you do want to stay in crypto. There's obviously coins like Monero um, that aren't being hyper centralized or like uh, essentially um, just played with. Um, so with this, with its kind of you know, hand in it, the SEC's Gensler seeks $2.4 billion in funding to chase down crypto misconduct. And there was a warning that um, for, a lot of these, uh, for a lot of these exchanges that they, they might be um, exposed essentially to, to regulation um, and kind of the consequences that come with it. Um, the regulator is spread thin and needs additional funding to keep up with the increased complexity in the capital markets. Um, rapid technological innovation in the financial markets has led to a misconduct in emerging and new areas, not least in the crypto space. Addressing this requires new tools, expertise, and resources. And, you know, it's true. I mean, it's, they need to get this under control. And for so long, the meme has been that uh, Congress just had not a, a clue what was going on regarding um, kind of these technological advances. S certainly, um, a lot of the congressional hearings regarding Facebook and, and data collection and some other things, it, it kind of showed how little some of the representatives know about these kind of newer technologies. Um, but also in the same vein, uh, these scams that are being run are not like novel ideas, right? I, I mean, all the scams you'd be familiar with from the industrial age or the golden age or whatever, the gilded age, um, it's just the same thing. I mean, these are just simple like pump and dumps and, and Ponzi schemes. but. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they actually will get this funding. Um, I'm not sure what they'll like, need it for, uh, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, the SEC chair said that the prior year's budget increase allowed it to bring staffing levels above what it was in 2016 for the first time, but said the regulatory agency was still stretched thin, adding, as the cop on the beat, we must be able to meet the match of bad actors. Thus, it makes sense for the SEC to grow along with the expansion and increased complexity in capital markets. Uh, so yeah, take it, you know, act accordingly, I suppose, if you're into crypto. And guys, stay tuned. Uh, we have some other interesting things to talk about. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien! Alright guys, uh, Fletch said in the den, or he asked, uh, do millennials and zennials, suppose Gen Z and millennial, like, cuspers, uh, even know what credit tightening feels like? And that answer is no. Uh, I, I'm... I would be right on the cusp of Gen Z and the millennials, and I have no idea what that feels like. This is, you know, 2008, I was like 12 or something like that. We, we have, you know, this is such a, a brand new world. And again, like a coming to age and something so insane, like which was the, the run up from 2020 and 2019. That set a bad, <laughs> that set a kind of bad precedent for all of us. Um, so it's talking again, you know, this outflow into the money market funds. Um, and I feel like I keep bringing you guys bad news, and I promise you there's good news out there. That You know, there's, <laughs> you always got to stay optimistic and everything like that. But it is important also to know um, some of the risks that uh, you could get yourself into or that you're facing. So uh, the flood of cash into U.S. money market funds could add to banking strains itself, obviously because money's leaving. Um, the flood of cash pouring into U.S. money market funds is unlikely to stop soon. Um, it has the potential to exacerbate strains in the banking system. The returns offered by money market funds um, da, 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 um, have soared far above the interest rates banks pay to depositors. And the Federal Reserve rapidly raised borrowing costs over the past year. Uh, despite this, quote, yawning gap, uh, it took the banking crisis sparked by the collapse of SVB to spark the recent stampede. Drawn in $340 billion since the beginning of March. That is some, like flight if I've ever seen it um, and yeah I mean it makes sense like why would you keep it in banks you know people are sus of them just to begin with right there's always like a similar distrust or a general distrust rather um, and then you so see you have those guys but then you also have it where it's like well I'm, I'd be getting more if I put it into a, into a money fund why, why would I keep it in the banks like I said, there's, there's still some contraction ahead for sure. Um, uh, the recent flows in the money market funds have drawn the attention of uh, Yellen, uh, who on Thursday warned over the structural vulnerabilities. If there is any place where the vulnerabilities of the system, this is a quote by her, uh, to runs and fire sales have been clear cut, it is the money market fund. Uh, the financial stability risks posed by the money market and open end funds have not been sufficiently addressed. Some experts have warned that the shift into money market funds also further threatens the stability of the banking sector, particularly in smaller, smaller regional lenders that can least afford to increase the interest rates they offer to account holders. This is nuts. Not as great as in, as in right when the pandemic was announced, but, or excuse me, quarantine. But, I mean, this is, this is huge, and it's not, you know, not going to light up anytime soon. Um, crucially, much of the cash in the money market funds ends up outside the banking system altogether, of course. Uh, user, it just goes back to the Fed, essentially, right? And that's weird in and of itself. And I, you know, I'm not, I suppose, 100% sure what implications there are with that. Um, let's see. Oh, this, he even says it. Andrew Levin, who worked for the Fed for two decades, the flow of cash money in the market funds is, is, yeah, in turn, the central bank's overnight facility is, quote, an accident waiting to happen. Usage of the so-called reverse repo 
uh, facility has climbed in recent weeks. There was a huge bump today, um, with daily levels running to about 2.3 trillion. This is, I mean, we really are playing with some big money here. <laughs> it's, just, it's the Fed's overnight reverse repurchasing facility. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's almost like you get into like kind of a paralysis of like what do you even want to do, right? I mean, the bonds are obviously reflecting this kind of like flight from the banks, but I mean, you know, I would have, you know, I don't know. This is what we have our, our traders here for, right? All of our daily newsletters. I mean, if you need some help kind of understanding, I mean, I learn every day from our traders here. I mean, they are invaluable uh, to learning and, uh, if you're like me and you're kind of like, what do you even do with this? Um, I would strongly recommend checking out some of the newsletters we have. You know, 30 day money back guarantee if you don't, if you don't, if it doesn't vibe with you. Um, but seriously, this is some, this is some crazy stuff. All right. Again, on some more weird news, um, not great news. Uh, this is regarding, uh, th this is a little micro um, example of what's happening in um, the office uh, real estate, essentially, right? Uh, so this is regarding the gas company tower. Um, let's see here. So this is owned by Brookfield. And th this is what this registration is. Um, it's an $800 billion investment in so many um, Brookfield does that itself, uh, real estate assets, but I mean, you had like insurance companies um, over the past few years who spent, you know, equally as insane amount of money, you know, relatively speaking, um, in uh, commercial real estate and some like, you know, um, ap ap apartments as well and everything, large scale apartments and developments. Um, but so, I mean, these guys defaulted on $753 million worth of the debt tied to this tower. This is the gas company tower, famous for that movie Speed, if you've ever seen that. It's in the opening. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I mean, again, we're going to see some, some major issues. Anyone who's holding these essential hot potatoes, I mean, you can talk about like restructuring your, your debt and stuff like that. But I mean, when you're defaulting on something so immense, like $760 uh, billion, I mean, you know, this is some doesn't bode super well. Um, let's see, we were talking to you uh, yesterday, the US consumer mood darkens, but banking turmoil impacted limited so far. Uh, the University of Michigan's monthly consumer sentiment index slid uh, to 62 in March from 67 in February, and how could it not? I mean, we were just talking about eggs, um, the profit of, of, of companies selling eggs uh, soaring to 700%. I mean, everything is so expensive. We're talking new cars, $50,000. We're talking you have uh, you know, regulatory authorities talking like we need to increase unemployment and, um, and decrease wages. Like, I can't imagine that consumer sentiment wouldn't be smacked entirely. Savings have gone up a little bit, though, um, by like 0.2%, um, which kind of, it, you know, I don't know if, how much that has to do with, with tax season and how much it has to do with like consumers being like, okay, I, we need to pull this back. And, and that kind of um, illiquidity, what, what kind of liquidity that brings into the market if that's really what is occurring, um, which is people holding on to their money and not spending so excessively, um, then that obviously helps quite a bit regarding inflation and we can maybe get out of the woods a little bit quicker on that. A um, little bit of woes for poor old Micron. Um, they are being investigated by the Chinese government. And I mean, this is just for espionage. This is just, um, I, I, you know, we're gonna have this little battle, right? The US economy and the Chinese economy in so many ways are very intimately related, um, <clears throat> especially in like the tech. Um, but, you know, we, the US government kind of blocked Huawei uh, imports. Um, so did a lot of other kind of like NATO aligned countries. Um, so now uh, Micron, is being investigated. Um, when we get back, I'll just talk about that very quickly, and then I want to go over uh, that cool little uh, paper I was talking about yesterday. We'll be back, guys. Stay tuned.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, Tigers. Yeah, um, Baseball Eyeballs um, on YouTube. He said something interesting about uh, buying oil here. That could be uh, not a bad play. And I, what I mean is this past month, um, OPEC oil production dropped. And in October, they said they're you know, going to cut by 2 million barrels per day. Um, and they're going to you know, revise that at some point. Um, but it seems like the drop isn't really due to any, any kind of policy decision. Um, it just seems like the member countries kind of <laughs> are having their own issues. Angola, um, which is a huge driver of, the, of this lower output, just couldn't maintain what they had. Um, and they've always been lagging in production regardless, um, but, but they contributed quite a bit. And then there's an issue in Iraq where they're blocking the Kurds from exporting oil, which is, you know, just, you know, that, that's a discussion in and of itself. But these kind of woes continue. I mean, you could see increasing, um, you know, an instability in the region is massive now anyways. Um, I mean, you're having some conflicts with Israel and moving into Damascus and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, you could see a, a point where, where oil kind of goes up a little bit. Um, to be really quick, if I have enough time, might not get to it again. <laughs> yeah, the National Bureau of Economic Research um, basically saying that, like, audits of uh, the 1% are not sophisticated enough. Um, unreported income composes up to 20% in the top 1%. According to the study, random audits fail to account for two limitations. 
tax evasion through foreign intermediaries, and tax evasion via pass-through businesses. Offshore goes entirely undetected in random audits. Uh, this was discovered by analyzing a sample of U.S. taxpayers who had to disclose hidden offshore assets due to specific enforcement initiatives. And that was in 2009-2012 that those initiatives were launched. Uh, NBER found that 90% of the audits were not able to detect offshore evasion, even though it was known that the subjects possessed offshore assets. Um, crazy stuff. Again, I, I linked that yesterday, but I would really recommend looking into it. Regarding the pass-through businesses, there's not a lot of good uh, kind of analysis into that. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it was such a pleasure, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, Tommy's coming on 9 a.m. Monday. Hang in there. Building